a reality. Glory. Are you ready for the word of God? Yes. All right. All right. All right. Romans chapter 9 verse 9. Romans chapter 4 verse 19. This evening, I will be talking about the sure message of David, living in the message of God in 2024. I will talk about living in the message of God in 2024. That's what I'm preaching about today. That's for this evening. So, Romans chapter 4, verse 19. Romans chapter 4, verse 19. And we're talking about ending, ending it with praise. Ending it with praise. By this time tomorrow, it will be 2024. And I believe that the best of God is in your future, not in your past. Do you believe that with the whole of your heart? That the best of God is in your future, not in your past. Yeah. And that's why I'm glad to tell you that next year will be way better than any other year you have ever lived before. Do you believe that? Saul says, how do I know? Because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 3, he says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with thee. He says in the book of Proverbs, he said, the path of the righteous man is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter till the perfect day. So I don't know what's going on, but I know it's only going to get better. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verse 19. The Bible is speaking about Abraham here. So God promised Abraham a child by Sarah, but Abraham had not received the child. And things had gotten worse. The Bible says, and Abraham was not weak in faith. He was not weak in faith because God said this to him and it hadn't happened. He considered not his own body now dead. So this is the way you're going to be thankful. You are going to choose what you want to consider. If you want to destroy your marriage, let me give you a simple formula to destroy your marriage. If you want to destroy a relationship, let me give you a simple formula to destroy a relationship. Just pick on all the negative things that your spouse does and focus on it. Just be like, hmm, my husband. He's not caring. What else? He's stingy. What else? He's not romantic. What else? He's too quiet. What else? What? It's, he comes home late. He walks too hard. He comes home late. What else? What? He snores. Praise God. Do you know, behind all this negative you think you said, behind all this negative things, apostle things, maybe he comes home late because he works very hard and provides for the family. But you forget to say that he comes home late because he works so hard to provide for the family. Yeah, he's stingy, but he's building a financial future for the whole family. He, watch this now, he is not, watch this now, he is not romantic, but he is very faithful to your partnership. Listen to me, I'm not disputing all the wrong things that he's doing. I'm only saying that if you want to destroy your marriage, all you have to do is to look at your partner and focus at everything that is wrong. Then gradually you will destroy the relationship. The same thing with your life. If you want to ruin a life, just look at your life and take note of all that is not working. Sometimes when you attend the fourth service where we have these interventions with people, I will tell people, I say, what's going on in your life? I say, and the person will say, nothing is going well in my life. I say, what do you mean? He says, I'm depressed. The person will say, I'm depressed. I'm lonely. I'm single, I've been heartbroken, I was ripped when I was young, and all of those kind of things. And I'll say, excuse me, um, do you live by yourself? He says, I do. Where do you live? I stay in VI. How much do you pay for rent? My rent is 4.5 million naira. 
I said, you can afford rent of 4.5 million naira. That means you have a job that pays you more than that. He said, yes. And I said, you don't think something good is going on in your life? The reason why I'm saying so is that, look at Abraham. The Bible says, and Abraham was not weak in faith. Abraham was promised he would have a child. He was not weak in faith. Why? This is the secret of not being weak in faith. This is the secret of thanksgiving. He says, he considered not his own body now dead. He was not looking at what was not done. He was not looking at what was not happening. He was not looking at what was pending. He was looking at what was done. The major thing that gets us into depression and ingratitude is that we keep looking at what's not done. You say that, well, I'm divorced. And you say, I'm divorced. What is good about that? But you forgot that you had beautiful kids that came out of your marriage. Why didn't you say, I have all these beautiful kids that God blessed me with. If you keep choosing to look at what the Lord has done for you, you will never find yourself in a bad place. Sometimes, someone asks me, said, as a pastor, is your job not very challenging? I say, it's the way you look at it. Someone said, people are always struggling and taking your time. I said, so the perspective is this. People are always struggling, taking your time, trying to get rid of you, trying to get hold of you. And I said, but I feel privileged that people are trying to see me. Some people, nobody. My own life, when I look at my phone, I always see missed calls, missed calls, missed calls. I look at my WhatsApp, lots of WhatsApp messages. I, I've become that person that people are looking for. I'm grateful. Because if you're not careful, you can become entitled. Live life from a point of privilege. I'm telling you, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that people are looking for me. Someone says, oh wow, they talk about you a lot. Don't you realize people only talk about you because you're on the top. Once you get to the top, you become a topic. Yeah. If you are not worth talking about, they will not talk about you. I'm grateful. So why it comes with some dragging, I'm also grateful that God has given me that kind of influence. So it's the perspective. So I understand that it's the dragging, but the only reason why you can be dragged is because you are draggable. Some people do things for people to drag them and nobody drags them at all. They will even post their gas online. Nobody even notices they just say one like, bam. And they like is their brother. Why am I saying this? I'm, I'm showing the secret of gratitude. I'm showing the secret of gratitude because some of it just needs to slow down. It's not that bad. It's what you're focusing on. Oh, let me say this to you. Your life is not that bad. The only reason why you feel that bad is because of what you are focusing on. You've chosen to focus on all the terrible, painful, hurtful experiences of life. If you choose to change and carry your mind and change your focus and ask yourself with just one question and say, what is going well in my life? I can tell what is going well in your life. Number one, you are in good health. That you should be grateful for. Because I know people that struggle with their health, they will give up anything to have good health. You're in good health. Look at you. You can carry your legs. You can carry your bones. You can carry... Some people cannot get off on the bed this morning. You have people that are your age mates. When they want to use the restroom, they will need someone to use it for them, to help them. I, you will have people that are your age mates that defecate on their body. But you are not like that. I want to ask you, did you beg to eat yesterday? Do you know how many people are of your category bearing your kind of name of your age and beg? The reason why I'm saying so is this. This is the reason I'm saying so. You need to slow down. 
and say, my life is not terrible. My life is not bad. I've just focused on all the things that are not working. You need to just slow down and tell yourself, my life is working. The reason why I'm unhappy is because all through my life, I've chosen to focus on what is not working. And let me say something to you quickly here. Someone says, how do you change that? The way you change that to say is, if I've made myself unhappy by focusing on what is not working, can I also change my focus and begin to focus on what is working? What is working? I have good health. What is working? I have people that support me. I have people that support me. I have people that call and check on me and say, how are you doing? I have a great career. I might, some of you are even married. I have a good partner. We may not be the richest couple, but we love each other. I have someone that I know loves me. Oh, but the love life is not great. But thank God that at least we're still in the same house. Some people, they are not even together again. I'm saying back to this verse. Because I'm trying to emphasize something that Thanksgiving is a discipline. When I say discipline, it's like you have to, dis it's like exercise. If you choose to exercise, when you feel like exercising, you know what will happen to you? You will never exercise. Thanksgiving is a discipline. People that go to the gym, they never do it because they feel like that. this morning, whoo! No? Literally, you can see them like, I'm at the gym. <laughs> see, the instructor going to say, bend down. He said, bend what? <laughs> because, is, it, is it your fault I came to the gym today? Because I don't want to do it, but I, I get myself to do it. That's what Thanksgiving is. If you, feel, if you wait to feel like being thankful, you would never be thankful. You have to drag yourself and drag your emotions and drag your ears and drag your hands and say, hey, be thankful. You know why? They will be always, oh my God, you need to realize this. People that are unthankful always focus and respond to the few things that makes them unthankful. People that are thankful look away and respond to things that make them thankful. Glory to God. Thanksgiving is a discipline. The Bible says, Abraham considered not his body. He says his body was dead. Like there was no way he could have a child. He says he refused to look at it. He kept on giving thanks to God. Wow. I'm grateful. Someone says, my life is not working. It's only because you're alive you're talking like that. Those that are in the graveyard, the journey is over. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for his mercy. I'm grateful for his love. I'm grateful for his faithfulness. Like the song says, I'm the one you have shown You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. I'm the one. I'm the one you have shown mercy mercy you have let me tell you what to thank you for are you thankful for some investment you did not make that if you had made you'll have lost money i'm thankful let me even think i'm thankful i'm thankful for money that i lost that people cannot even imagine that you lost that amount of money and you are here. Who can identify with me? People are like, huh? You lost that amount of money and you're like this. And grace and mercy covers you so much that nobody can see your shame. Praise God. I'm thankful that you don't understand. Some people lost one million and their life was over. Some people, if you talk to them, it was when I lost one million five years ago that everything was around. You've lost more than one million. See how grace and mercy has covered you. So I'm only saying to you here that can we learn something from Abraham? 
the discipline of thanksgiving. That we're not thanking God only when things look bright, when things look great. That at every instant we've disciplined ourselves, our response to the outcomes of life is thanksgiving. That's the one I'm going to. That our response, someone say my response to the outcome of life is thanksgiving. Let me read one scripture to you and we'll close from there. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 21. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 21. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 21. Can we have this displayed on the screen? I'm thankful. I'm super thankful. The Bible says this. This was Israel got into a battle problem. The Bible says, and when he had consulted with the people, they were in a battle situation. He says, they appointed singers unto God and that they should praise, that they should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endured forever. Just imagine they were going into a warfare and the biggest instruction was this. Start the warfare with what? Thanksgiving. Look at verse 21, 22. The Bible says this. Things hadn't gotten better. It says, and when they began to sing, notice this. When they began to sing and praise God, the Lord set ambush. Listen to me. They didn't sing and praise God when things got better. It was in the midst of the toughness when they began to sing and praise God. The Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Sinai, which had come against them, and they were smitten. The question is this, can you praise God when you see nothing? And that's why I say Thanksgiving is what? A discipline. Like Jim. You know the problem with Thanksgiving is that, like Jim, you know, I remember, and let me say something to you. Spiritual laws work with consistency. That's the challenge. I remember when I joined the gym, I joined the gym, I joined the gym, and um, <laughs> when I joined the gym, after like one, of, like one week, I came to see my wife, I said, I told my wife, ah, see. <laughs> so, my wife looked closely, I said, I said, ah, you can't see it. <laughs> you know, and nothing had changed. Sometimes it's working. You are just looking for results too early. Are you getting me? Sometimes the prayer is working. The thanksgiving is working. You are just looking for results too early. So the, when I went back to the gym, I asked the instructor. And I said, excuse me, when does it begin to show? He said, you will notice changing your body in one month, but it will not show. He said, but for it to show for people to see, three months of consistent work. He said, I never said you, it will show big time. He said, it will begin to show. Guess what? Every time it's shown you are working out was not the time you started. Every time your prayer started working was not the time you started praying. Every time your thanksgiving started working was not the time you started thanking God. It, you had begun it. The time of manifestation is not the time of doing Learn to keep doing it when nobody is seeing it. Listen to me. If nobody will encourage you, encourage yourself. Because just give it some time. It's going to show up. Just give it some time. It's going to show up. But can you show up in the gym on Monday and show up on Tuesday and show up on Wednesday and show up on Thursday? Like, you know what I notice? The biggest encouragement will be like, wow, your muscles are coming out. You're losing weight. But the thing is that before others notice, can you keep encouraging yourself? I'm telling you, this way, this is where the challenge is. The challenge is that you're working so hard, thanking God and praying, and there's nothing to show for it. And that is a gap where it's challenging. The reason why is that the moment people start telling you that, uh-uh, I can see your prayer is working, you will not need someone to encourage you again. Because it's now visible to others. The discipline comes when you cannot even see it. Others cannot even see it. But you know you are walking behind the scene. So what am I saying to you? You must learn to be consistent 
until you what? See it. In the other service, someone was giving me a testimony about how the government sent the letter. He got this breakthrough. I said, now we can see it. But how many years were you walking behind the scene? How many months were you walking behind the scene and we could not see? You know what I want to tell you to do? Even though we can't see it, can we be consistent in Thanksgiving? And don't make Thanksgiving a one-off thing. Make it a discipline. Make it what? A discipline. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then one day. You know, because I've lost some weight, weight loss is very funny. People don't notice when you're losing weight. Pam, pam, pam. They just want to ah, you've lost so much weight. But that's it. It was coming gradually. But one day, it reached the tipping point. Keep praying. Keep thanking God. One day, they just look at it. Ha ah, Everything has changed for you. What change? You will tell them, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. That's what the Bible says that, that's what the Bible says that, he that goeth forth bearing precious seeds shall doubtlessly return with it. But when he's bearing precious seeds, nobody sees the tears, but he will come back for his own testimony. The, this is what I'm saying to you. From the discipline, not just the action, the discipline. I will keep thanking God. I will keep praising God. If it's enough to worry about, it's big enough to thank him for. If it's enough to worry about, it's big enough to thank him for. If you're taking stuff in my mind, it's big enough to thank him for. I will keep thanking him until the daylight breaks on the matter. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who here has a testimony of the, something big the Lord has done for you this year? Something big the Lord has done for you. Here, come, my brother. Come. Here, come. Take your phone. Take your phone. Are you together? Okay. Your husband? Oh, fantastic. I never knew. I know him, but I never knew. Yeah, good. What has the Lord done for you this year? Yeah, come. Yeah. Just come stand here. Let's, let's share together. Yes, face the camera. Yeah, good morning, church. Okay, so um, on this same day last year, um, my wife invited me to this church. I wasn't in town, so I had to stream it online. Um, so when I'm thinking of this lesson in my head, I was going to say someone invited me, and that's when I've now become my wife. <laughs> ladies, invite everybody to reset. Invite, <laughs> ladies, invite everyone to reset. <laughs> We came for first service, and so when you ask people to give their testimonies, you know, I felt the nudge, but I'm just a very, very private person, very, and you're always talking about people stepping out of their comfort zones and really um, giving testimonies for what God has done, because it can always encourage someone, yeah. you know, and that's somewhat my story. You know, the Lord has been good and kind to us this past one year. Um, he has seen us through several challenges, you know, so... After reset, I'll just name a few. So after reset, I was on my way back um, to Lagos, January 2nd, and I got an email from a service provider that I was renting my apartment from, and they'd just given me two weeks to work it. They had issues with the property owner. They were not remitting rent to the property owner, so he was pissed, you know, and gave us two weeks to vacate the premise. And this was me coming back. You know, I was pumped, ready to go into 2023. This is going to be a great year. And that was the first news. The first news I got, it was, you're about to be evicted. It was crazy. And I'm like, what am I going to do? You know, so I got back into um, Lagos, started that whole process, trying to get to place to stay, you know. And then February comes, I get a call from my boss, and he says, we're downsizing, you know. <laughs> you know, and so... Um, so you lost your accommodation? Yeah. You lost your job? Exactly. What else did you lose? <laughs> Well, the year prior, I mean, there was, there's a whole backstory, you know, she yeah. knows the whole thing. But so what, what did the Lord do for you? I'm trying to cut so the Lord, to it. Long story short, um, down in August, September, I get a call from my boss again saying that, you know, he wants me back. The business has picked up, you know, and he's brought me back as chief of staff, you know, for the company. Praise God. Um, and so my wife comes from a Muslim background, you know, she just converted um, the year prior, 2022. You know, so when I was going to be her father for the first time. You know, she was scared. 
how is he going to accept this, you know, and she was very, very worried. But I remember very clearly, you know, so we're praying to go to Obomosho where he's based now, and we're streaming NLP that very morning. You know, I was in the shower, but I was streaming, and then you said that um, if you're going to meet your in-laws, the Holy Spirit will give you utterance. Wow. You know? And then I ran out from the bathroom and I screamed, amen. <laughs> <What happened to? laughs> you're not naked. Oh my God. You know, this guy ran out naked from the shower. <laughs> I screamed, amen. You know, and I said, I told you, don't worry, everything's going to go well. So we get to we get to Obama shop. We see him, you know, it was almost starting out shaky, but before you knew it. But long and short, show us that ring now. <laughs> You know, we're best friends. Like, he, we enjoyed, we had conversations. She was shocked. I sat down with her father. We were talking for hours, and she could not believe it. You know, it was, praise it's just, God. it's just God. So, Jump back, yes. accommodation back. Yes. Married to the love of his life. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Amen. You, you know what I'm saying? This, I'm happy for a big story, but in between the process, there was pain but remaining thankful. Some of you right now, maybe the big testimony has not come out, but can you remain thankful? Hallelujah. Someone else want to share a testimony? Okay, I have somebody else. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Good morning. Yeah, um, good morning, church. So, um, there's this approval that my family and I have been praying for on my behalf for years now. And um, we got very close to it. Like, we were one step away from it earlier this year. But I didn't get it. So I didn't know that God already spoke to someone that it just wasn't time yet. So moving on, for the next one, I, I didn't want to pray about it because I was like, okay, if it's not time yet, when it's time, should be to just happen normally. <laughs> but I didn't even get close at all this time. Like, I didn't even get any step close to it. So me and my brother were like we were brainstorming about it and we we're looking at other options but i just heard the voice saying try one more time so i i, I hit to the voice even though it didn't really make sense i hit to the voice and then moving on i was really scared because of what what, what had happened before like this is the right decision but i just kept hearing it is settled it is settled it is settled so on the morning of the interview i was listening to nlp and pastor Bolaji was praying specific prayers like it was meant for me he kept saying you'll be preferred kept making same praying prayers like that. And when I was going, I just felt like like the angels of the Lord were with me. Like <laughs> and then when when I got when it was my turn, like everything just got so easy. It was just all smiles and happiness and it didn't even take up to like a minute, less than a minute and I just got the approval. So I <laughs> so I made a vow that I was going to come and give a testimony. And um, even though I'm quite shy, I just had to do it. So I have to say, if you're there and you're praying to God about something, if God says something, he's definitely going to do it. So just stay there in a place of prayer. And thanks so much, Pastor Balaji. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more. Okay. The last one. The last one. How come no lady gave a testimony today? Wait, wait, no lady? All the ladies? I, I need one lady with a big testimony. Just one lady with a big testimony to stand up and come. Just one lady with a big Stand up. I'm not going to call you. If you want to come, then come yourself. Yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord. Um, I have um, a few testimonies. One minute. Okay. So first of um, this time last year. And remember that if you, if you don't get to share in the morning, the evenings, we have like loads of time for testimonies. Yeah. So this time last yeah. year, yeah. I was quite depressed. I lost every, everything I had. I lost my accommodation, lost money and everything. And But presently right now, I've been able to sort out myself. I've been able to pay up all my debts. I've been, you know, I'm very much okay right now. This year, I also became a small group leader. Um, I, even in my very busy schedule, I'm a banker, but, you know, we pray together. We've had a lot of testimonies back to back, back to back. That is so good. And, you know, and I also, you know, serve with the choir and, you know, this, I've been, I've been repeating my ICANN exams for a while because I've been so busy and, you know, I never had time to prepare for it, but I just want to try. Let me just do it, you know. But this time, I never even prepared at all because we were preparing for Fantasia and I took leave for it, but I still came for Riaza and, you know, I wrote the exams and I saw the results last week and I passed it. Just one, just one lady. Which is the lady we're taking now? Which one? What? Okay. 
No, no, we'll take, we'll take, just take two ladies. We'll just take, the reason why is that time for the next service. So the other ones should get their names so that in the evening we can take their testimony. Yeah. Okay. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Okay, so earlier this year, while I was coming to church along Ikoi Road, I had an accident. I was in an Uber, like it lost its brakes, and we hit on that car, and that was it. And I just realized that I was good, I was fine. Like nothing happened, it's kind of accident. I was like, I was good, and I still came to church. And um, the second testimony is last week. So I just finished uh, my NYC camp, and I was looking for a job where I would do my PP and all. So I met a man in church, a brother in church, and I explained to him, I was looking for a job. And okay, he gave me his number. He gave a testimony. He gave a testimony in church about his company and all. I collected his number. I went to the company for an interview last week. And I got the job, a good job, and with a great pay. So that I is just awesome. want to say thank you, Lord. That is awesome. Where's the other lady? Come. That is awesome. Yes. Okay, so last year, I and my family, we decided to relocate, and we tried relocating to the UK, and it didn't work, even after getting to the point of um, getting all we needed to do. Then this year, we didn't have money. We borrowed a lot of money as at last year. Then God knows that I don't understand how we're able to pay it till now. God has just been good and kind to us. We got our relocation to Canada. I and my family, and um, at first when we started it, um, we got a refusal, then I remember running to church, and um, I got the message to just try again. We didn't have anything, then people, I work in a bank, and people just started giving me money and helping us out with everything, and um, it worked out, and um, I just want to give all glory and adoration to God. It's a boobay. Can you all stand on your feet, lift up your hands and let's go ahead and thank him. Let's go ahead and thank him. Let, let's go ahead and thank him. Let's go ahead and thank him. Let's go ahead and thank him. Let's go ahead and thank him, everyone. Let's go ahead and thank him. Let's go ahead and thank him. Just reflect and thank him. Thank him for the gift of health. Thank him for relationships. Thank him for family. Thank him for career. Thank you for progress. Oh God, we're grateful. Oh God, we're grateful. Oh Lord, we're grateful. Oh Lord, we're grateful. Oh Lord, we're grateful. The discipline of thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we're praying. Lord, what a year. <laughs> what a year. Many waters passed under the bridge, but we're standing. There were many attempts, many attacks, but we're standing. There were almost, there were several almost missed, but we're standing to the lifter up of our head to the preserver of our lives so our king to our god to our savior to our pillar we have come to return all the glory accept our thanks in jesus name and i'm praying that lord oh my yay everything we're thanking you for will not be withdrawn They will multiply. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.